We live in times of unprecedented energy demand. Demand for energy is continuing to grow at a phenomenal rate. But the threat of human-caused climate change is forcing us to explore new ways of producing the energy we and the developing world need. The resulting narrative from this tension is one that pits renewables against fossil fuels, demanding that we choose a side. I believe that this narrative is false, unproductive, and unnecessarily polarized. Instead, we need to think of it for what it is. It's a transition, a transition from burning molecules as an energy source like wood, coal, oil and gas, and transmitting and producing clean electrons via renewables like wind and solar. But like all beneficial transitions, it will not and cannot occur overnight. Only with proper support from molecules can we transition to clean electrons. I was raised in Calgary, Alberta, Canada's energy capital. I've been interested and have worked in, renew in energy my entire life. If you need proof, check out the image of me playing a computer game called Oil Baron as a child. It's also proof that I've always had a tremendous sense of fashion. Growing up in Calgary at the doorstep of the Canadian Rockies gave me an appreciation for nature, and I've been interested in environmental issues for my entire life. I earned a degree from, in computer science from the University of Toronto, and I started my career in oil and gas and technology. My first entrepreneurial venture was an oil and gas technology company that I started at the age of 24 that, amongst other things, helped oil and gas companies manage and report their greenhouse gas emissions. This gave me great insight into the environmental liabilities that oil and gas companies were starting to grapple with at a really early stage. I had a successful exit from my software company at the age of 30, and I knew that the next venture I wanted to do was something that was both an exciting business challenge and one that could leave a positive lasting impact on the environment. So with no prior experience in power generation, I started GreenGate Power with my own money 13 years ago with the goal of developing large-scale renewable energy projects right here in the heart of oil country, my home province, Alberta, Canada. It's been quite the challenge and adventure so far. If I knew then how hard it was going to be at times, I may not have actually embarked on this journey in the first place, but sometimes ignorance is bliss. But we have been successful. Here are two of the projects that we've developed. The one on the left with the largest wind energy project in Canada when it was completed in 2014. The one on the right is expected to be the largest solar energy project in Canada when it's completed hopefully in 2022. These two projects represent well over a billion dollars of investment and can provide clean power to more than 200,000 homes. Successfully developing renewable energy projects in the heart of oil country has given me a unique perspective on this issue and one that may surprise some of you. So let's do a vision exercise. Close your eyes, picture the year 2030 and our energy system. You know, what are the vehicles that we drive? How do we heat our buildings? What do our buildings look like? And let's make this a realistic vision, not your ideal vision. It's important to have an ideal vision, but let's make this one realistic. Look around. Now open your eyes. Are there more electric vehicles on the road than there are today in your vision? Are there still gasoline powered vehicles on the road in your vision? Are there more buildings with solar panels than there are today? Are we still burning fossil fuels to heat our homes? I've asked these questions to multiple audiences in the past and most answer yes to all four questions. Now that points to an, a future that's much cleaner than it is today, but one in which fossil fuels still matter. In other words, molecules still matter. The modern world as we know it today is thanks to abundance of energy that's provided to us by fossil fuels. As this image of my hometown, Calgary, Alberta shows, from the cars we drive, to the way we heat our buildings, to the way we power our lights, most of our energy today still comes from fossil fuels. In other words, molecules. But there is a transition underway from fossil fuels to renewables molecules to clean electrons, but it will take time. This chart from Bloomberg is focused on electricity. It shows that most of our electricity today comes from fossil fuels and that even in the future, a significant amount of our electricity will still come from fossil fuels. Now, the speed of this transition has been something that's been hotly debated. 
I believe that this transition will occur even more quickly than in the chart, but it still seems that fossil fuels will remain part of our energy system for quite some time. And we can't simply shut off the taps to our fossil fuel resources for the sake of addressing climate change. First off, it's not technically feasible today. Renewables can't produce energy for us seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Renewables produce when the sun's shining or the wind is blowing, but what do you do when those conditions don't exist? That's where fossil fuels still play a role. And fundamentally, it's all about economics. If you take climate change, climate change is obviously an environmental issue, but if you really boil it, really boil it down, it's also an economic issue. What's the cost of dealing with uh, climate refugees? What's the cost of dealing with these climate catastrophes that happen? Ultimately, there's an economic cost associated with climate change. But it's also an economic cost to simply shut down portions of our economy for the sake of addressing climate change. It's, and it's unjust to the individuals and families whose livelihoods uh, depend on it. Now, being from Calgary, I'd like to make a quick plug for the Canadian oil and gas sector. I believe that while the world continues to use oil and gas, it should be Canadian oil and gas. The Canadian oil and gas industry is vital to our uh, national economy. Our oil and gas in Canada is among the most responsibly produced in the world. And opposition to development of Canadian oil does not benefit the environment. All it does is erodes Canada's share of the global oil market and moves that oil production to countries that are not as safe, don't have the same environmental record, don't have the same human rights record, and are often outright hostile to Canadian interests. So I just think it makes no sense for Canadians to be opposing development of oil and gas in Canada while the world is still using oil and gas. I believe that the transition is something that's going to take time, but we need to find the right measured approach to get us to where we all need to be. That said, there's no doubt in my mind that the age of renewables has arrived and that the coming decade will see profound changes to the way we produce and consume our energy. Ultimately, our, our energy system is moving from burning molecules to creating clean electrons from renewable sources like wind and solar in order to produce the energy that we need to power our modern world. As I see it, there are three legs of the stool when it comes to the new energy, new clean energy system. First off, generation of the electricity itself from renewables. Now this is the part, of the part of the stool that's the farthest along, but it's still limited by the intermittency. We can produce energy when the sun is shining or the wind's blowing, but what, we do, what do we do when those conditions don't exist? Now that problem's in the pro process of being solved, uh, which I'll get into in a second. There's also electrification of the transportation sector. So taking those clean electrons generated from renewables and transmitting them directly into the batteries of the vehicles that we drive. And if you need proof that electric vehicles are going to be very much in our future, Tesla, a company that only produces electric vehicles, is now the most valuable automotive company in the world, recently surpassing Toyota. The third leg of the stool, and I think this is the key enabler of a whole scale transition to renewables, and that's utility scale battery storage. The challenge that exists with electricity today is it can't be stored in large quantities. What battery storage allows us to do is store the energy from days where we have excess sun or days that we have excess wind and use that same energy, that stored energy, to deliver renewable electricity seven days a week, 24 hours a day. In fact, it's an entirely new paradigm. I liken it to the analog versus digital analogy. Traditionally, we've produced electricity mechanically by burning molecules, burning wood or gas to heat a home, burning gasoline or diesel to move our vehicles, burning coal or gas to produce electricity, essentially an analog system. But the combination of solar and batteries in particular is, is entirely different. We're producing and storing energy with no moving parts, essentially a digital system. And with that system, it allows for unprecedented cost reductions and efficiency improvements, very similar to computers. In 1969, we sent humans to the moon with a computer that would have filled this entire theater. But today, we all carry in the palm of our hands a computer that's more powerful than what sent humans to the moon. I believe that the same type of cost reductions and efficiency improvements are possible in solar and batteries, and the implications of that are quite profound. And global capital is rushing into renewables. This chart is focused on current and forecasted um, investment in electricity generation globally. 
as you can see by the blue shaded area, wind and solar are already attracting the most investment for new power generation, but their share of the future uh, market is only going to grow. As you can see, that shaded area grows over, that blue shaded area grows over time. This is due to the fact that renewable energy is a great investment, delivers a great long-term steady return for investors, but investors are also increasingly interested in environment, social, and governance metrics. Essentially investing to earn a return, but also doing good in the world in the process. Another reason why capital is flowing into renewables is because the cost of renewable energy continues to come down at a phenomenal rate. For example, the cost of solar panels has dropped by more than 90% over the last decade and costs continue to come down. This chart shows the countries of the world where renewables are currently the lowest cost source of new power generation. These countries represent two thirds of the global population and over the coming decade, we expect that renewables will be the lowest cost source of power generation across the globe. So to conclude, the near future is not one of electrons only or molecules only. It's a changing mix. The future will be much cleaner than it is today, but there will still be a role for fossil fuels. A renewable future is made possible in large part by leveraging the wealth that has been provided to us by the fossil fuel industry. However, make no, make no mistake, the age of renewables has arrived and the coming decade will see profound changes to the way we produce and consume our energy. For those that desire a clean energy future and protest oil and gas development, I think it's important to remember that our current prosperity, health and technological advances were made possible as a result of the energy that comes from fossil fuels. Recognize that oil and gas will continue to have a, an important role to play in our energy system for the foreseeable future. And we must remember that there are individuals and families that are affected by job losses in the oil and gas sector, and those individuals and families need to be treated fairly in this transition. For those working in the oil and gas industry and de denying the tremendous advances in renewables, I think it's important to be aware of global trends and embrace the future. Otherwise, we run the risk of being left behind. Recognize that renewables are now extremely low cost and the age of renewables has arrived. I believe it's really important for us to move past the polarization. Ultimately, I think we're much better off working together. Let's work together to ensure that the future is clean and prosperous for all. Thank you.